Good morning, everybody. So glad you're with us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nadia Irampour. Uh, you know, we're going to be a little cooler today. Okay. Today, tomorrow. I'm not talking, you know, chilly conditions, but 70 degrees instead of 80s. Also, watching this right here, we have a chance for some light showers. As you see a little green to the east, there's also some green to the south of us. So we'll be watching that closely, let you know if we may get a few drops out of this system, where our temperatures are headed in the next couple days, and what's up with Thanksgiving for your forecast. All coming up. Jenny, good morning. Good morning. The one thing you need to know, travel times are okay. Crash on Oleander Avenue at Poinsettia, one lane blocked. And right now, crews, they're making progress on a series of water main breaks that happened within hours of each other. So this will remain an issue for the morning commute as well as for residents and businesses around downtown. News 8's Evan Ronnie is live over the five near the Hawthorne Street exit with an update for us. Good morning, Evan. Yeah, good morning to you, both of you, Netta and Eric. That's right. The lanes of the five are back open, but there are still some on ramps that there uh, is some trouble at, and that is mainly that 11th Avenue on ramp to the five freeway, as well as the 163, where you can start to see some congestion. That on ramp still closed at the 11th Avenue uh, entrance, but the five itself flowing smoothly this morning. There are starting, we're starting to see uh, the volume on the five start to pick up as well. Now, as we head into the next couple of days, crews are still going to be working on repairs to those pipes, but they were able to resume that water service to the thousands of residents that lost it in downtown San Diego and traffic has started to pick up as normal as opposed to the, uh, you know, traffic and delays that it caused all through yesterday. News 8 spoke with many people who were uh, not getting their water, who were seeing the delays on the roads about kind of what a headache it was over the course of Sunday and Monday. You don't think about water until it goes away and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, we really use a lot of water. I'll boil the water. Yep. 30 seconds. Let it sit. Just strain it if I need to. And that water flooded the roadways late Sunday and early Monday for hours before crews were able to bring it under control after a 24 inch reinforced concrete water pipe burst near the transition road from the 163 to 4th Avenue, complicating matters for crews. Some of the valves near the brakes were not closing properly. And just hours before that, a 76 year old cast iron pipe burst at 11th Avenue and A Street, flooding the streets and a nearby business and wiping out water service to at least three city blocks, including several high rise buildings and thousands of residents. Now this morning there are many residents that are going to still be under a boil water notice, although their water has been turned back on. There are nine different addresses to note, but the city says they've alerted all of those residents already. If you'd like a full list, you can head to our website, CBS 8. We've got more information there for the latest. Uh, but again, this morning on the 5 and the 163, it looks like traffic is able to resume as normal, with the exception of a few portions of it, where maybe one of the lanes is still blocked off. But uh, much better this morning on our Tuesday, as opposed to what we saw yesterday morning. I'll send things back to you, Eric and Etta. Evan, thank you for the update today. The man accused of driving his SUV into a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin, will make his first court appearance. 39-year-old Daryl Brooks of Milwaukee is charged with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Police say he was fleeing a domestic incident when he ran over barricades and entered the parade route. A candlelight vigil was held last night to honor the victims. Already this morning, we have seen a flood of passengers at the San Diego airport like we haven't seen in years. It is one of the busiest travel days this holiday season. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it that busy so early at the airport. News 8's Chris Groh joining us live at the San Diego International Airport uh, to let us know what we need to know. It looked like a steady stream of people behind you there earlier. I tell you what, I was on a flight earlier this month and it no way was as busy as what we are seeing right now. Now, of course, as we just heard from the San Diego International Airport, it's not quite approaching pre pandemic levels, but still, if you haven't flown in about two years, essentially, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to, especially if you have flights tomorrow, uh, maybe even on Thursday or potentially the weekend after if you are here visiting and then plan on returning because again, they are expecting things to be busier than normal and that's always kind of the threshold that you want to look at. Yes, we're constantly comparing things to pre pandemic levels. But for instance, the TSA across the nation, they said that they checked in more than 2 million people for five days straight. So they are seeing it not just here, but also at other places. So that also is something to keep in mind here as we approach Thanksgiving. If you are having a connecting flight or another, uh, you know, another destination, etc. So again, San Diego International Airport is warning passengers to try to get here early to make sure you're prepared, make sure you have those masks. 
Make sure you're looking at what type of vaccine requirements may be uh, taking place in other places where you might be traveling. Essentially, be prepared. Yeah, really plan ahead, right? That's that's going to be the key. So make sure that you are arriving at least two hours for a domestic flight and three hours inter for an international flight and even maybe allowing some of that buffer time because of the the, uh, the water main break, you know, that is closing some of the streets to get to the airport. So there's, there's a little bit of a detour. So it's going to take a little bit of time. But yes, please plan ahead. Make sure that you have plenty of time to get here at a park, get dropped off, get through security into your gate. Yeah, and we're just at the end of Terminal 2. So by the way, this is kind of where things aren't quite as busy because there's a whole other section of this terminal down there. And then, of course, you have Terminal 1, which does tend to get a little bit busier, especially in these early morning hours because you have both those arriving and departing uh, kind of mixed in there together. So again, expect things to be busy. Be prepared. And of course, if you have any questions, go to News 8, uh, go to CBS8.com. Guys, back to you. All right, Chris Grow live at the very busy airport here this morning. So gas prices here in town have now gone up for two weeks in a row. Maybe that's why some of the people are just deciding to fly. The average price, $4.66. It's a trend we are seeing nationwide. So today, President Biden is expected to announce he will release oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. That's what a White House official confirmed to CBS News. The White House hopes the move will keep gas prices low during the holiday season. And this morning, SDG&E will begin notifying people who may lose power on Thanksgiving Day. The utility may issue these public safety power shutoffs because of an increase in our fire danger. The National Weather Service now issuing a fire weather watch starts 4 a.m. Thursday through Friday evening for the mountains and for many of our inland valleys. So this will affect a lot of people on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, right now, as we're looking across our skies, you see a little bit of cloud coverage just right there off in the distance. And what we're watching Watching for is a chance for some moisture. So today and tomorrow, we could see that increase in off onshore flow, a chance for really, really light showers. You see most of it to the east and then most of it also to the south of us, but it is getting closer. So this line of green right here, it's get, it's creeping closer and closer to the border. So it could bring us really minimal activity here in San Diego over the next few hours. We'll definitely be monitoring this for you. Overall, the big picture does show right there through much of the state. We are staying pretty dry for today. In fact, this cloud forecast model just shows some high clouds coming through the mix and not much green showing up here. We could see Virgo, which means it'll evaporate before it hits the ground. Uh, but, you know, it's something to note because we've had such dry, hot weather the past couple days. Now things are changing. A little overcast conditions downtown at 55 degrees. Winds right now are calm, but they are onshore coming in from the coast. 53 in El Cajon, 54 in Poway, 43 in Ramona. Let's take you over the next 12 hours for downtown San Diego. Upper 60s to 70 degrees. That's all we're going to get to today. A lot different than yesterday, about 10 to 15 degrees cooler. Low 70s instead of the low to mid 80s, which is where a lot of you got yesterday. So El Cajon, 75 instead of 85. 71 in Ramona, 73 in Escondido. In fact, these numbers are seasonal. Now I want to talk about the winds. So as I mentioned, we have that coastal breeze today, tomorrow, which is why we have this big drop in those temperatures. But then everything changes Thursday morning, starting 4 a.m. You see that fire weather watch through Friday at 6 p.m. Dry Santa Ana's will be coming through, which of course elevates our fire risk. I'll get more into those details coming up in your full forecast. Let's send it over to Jenny. Uh, well, welcome to your Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, if you uh, so partake. I want to tell you that you shall not be bamboozled by this particular traffic report, for I shall give you all the information. I will tell you that not a lot of people running amok this morning because it is fairly calm with your travel times. Minor crash here, Oleander Avenue. This is right at Poinsettia Avenue. Single lane is blocked. This is just recovery work, as you can see that they're doing. Well, you can't see, but you can read it. It says recovery work. So just a little bit of debris in the area that they're clearing up all your travel times to the North County are fine. Now to the south, if you recall, if you drive in the area or if you were watching us, hopefully you were, we had that big old water main break. In fact, there were two water main breaks that caused chaos on the five. Currently, we've got some ramp closures this morning. So that ramp from Brant Street from the North Bond Five, that is shut down. That exit ramp from Hawthorne Street to the North Bond Five, that is closed as well. Our Evan Narani is live in the area. So he's going to keep giving us live updates throughout the morning. But just a friendly reminder that lane leading up to Hawthorne is still shut down. And then that entrance ramp 
from Brant Street that is closed. If I remove the box here, you can see just a little bit of a delay on that northbound side of the five, but overall it looks wonderful, especially if we compare it to yesterday, right? Here's the 805, that northbound commute approaching the 94. Just past the 15, we do have a little bit of volume, so I would say your average travel times are 22 miles an hour. Coronado Bridge looks good. No other major issues at 610.